प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब फॉर मोर वीडियोस थैंक यू one of the joys of presenting videos is that you can uh, make things up we're supposed to be here obviously as presenters informing you about things but you got to give us a little bit of leeway surely we can have a bit of fun and just make up our own checkmates and i really hope you guys at home after watching this series can come up with some of your own ones as well now what i'm going to show you here is called the run forest run forest gump checkmate and i kind of made this one up and what it's all about it's not actually a pattern i am cheating but hey ho i'm allowed to because i'm doing the video all right and what it's all about is making your opponent's king run 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 hence the forest gump checkmate and i just want to show you to finish you know this i would say course off for now maybe you want some more videos in this let me know if you do but for now some beautiful games where the opponent's king run run runs so first of all we're going over to our good old friend who appears a lot mr alexander alakain and he's playing oscar tenor so let's see how he made the black king run 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 e4 and now e5 and in order to get the kind of romantic victories that you know everyone should have once in their life you've got to sometimes play romantic openings there's nothing more romantic then f4 the king's gambit now bishop c5 play black not taking the pawn there's a massive blunder that white can do here by the way i've seen loads of people falling into this pawn takes e5 do not do this because after queen h4 check you are lost that queen is going to do some nasty nasty things to you so um alexander developed knight f3 d6 and now development knight c3 knight to f6 and again, when you're trying to create these patterns, nothing comes out thin air, I'm afraid. Maybe it does in physics. They're trying to do that with quantum physics at the moment, but I don't know anything about that. We have to develop our pieces. We have to build up. So we need to get our pieces into the game. Bishop c4. And this brings another piece into a position, which is a good square for the bishop. Knight c6, and now d3. And this is actually a variation of the King's Gambit I've had myself. Bishop g4 played. Both sides playing very well at the moment. White now plays knight to a4 because the bishop on c5 is an extremely annoying piece. It stops white from castling. White tries to swap it off. Not too much happening at this moment in time. Pawn takes f4. White now takes off the bishop on c5. Pawn takes c5. Bishop takes f4. And now black tries to get rid of white's bishop in a similar technique. Knight to h5. Bishop to e3. And it's absolutely remarkable that in this position which is a very sensible and normal kind of position black actually gets checkmated in the middle of the board with his king in five more moves can you adam and eve it believe it for those of you who don't come from london well here black should play something sensible like i would say b6 knight d4 try to get that king castled instead black now played knight to e5 and this is a very interesting moment because it comes back to something that we touched upon earlier on and this is another reason i picked this particular game once you see patterns once you know the patterns if you looked at all of my videos so far you may well in this position recognize what move you should be playing because i'm not going to tell you what the name is but if in the notes here what is this inviting and after white's next move which is knight takes knight leaving the queen on pre this actually transposes to one of the previous videos i've done and it's named after one of those videos and hopefully you can recognize it straight away if you don't know the name that's not important just know the pattern and it's all about giving up your queen to force the opponent's king into the open run forest run so black has to take the queen and now we keep attacking bishop takes f7 check and what does black do well if black goes to f8 here we can go bishop takes c5 check and black has to give up his queen. Then we're going to take the bishop on d1 with a winning position. So the king has to come into the open. Come on, boy. King to e7. Can you start to see the checkmate here? Come on, guys. Can you see it? Can you see the checkmate? I'll give you a clue. The king ends up on e5. Try to work it out now. Pause if you need to. Bishop takes c5 check. Run, forest, run. And again, if you say this in a real game, bonus points. You might get thrown out of the competition, but I give you personal ginger points. Just say, you know, if you force your opponent's king, run, forest, run. King to f6, only square. Let's keep that king running. Castle's queen side. King side, check. 
And now the king has two squares to go to. And, well, if king to g5, this is maybe where black should have moved the king. In the game, king to e5 was played, and now it's checkmate in one move. Can you see it? Rook to f5, checkmate, and the king has been mated in the middle of the board. So uh, maybe king to g5 is better, but this also leads to a very nice checkmate. And again, I'm not going to tell you the answer. I'm going to leave a little bit of mystery. I'm going to let you guys work it out. It's maybe not too hard, but a little bit harder than last checkmate. Okay, now before we finish the series, I've got one more example of the forest, forest king running. So let's just move to that one now. Now we're going to have a look at a king's gambit gone wrong. Because, of course, if you play in romantic style, it's not always going to be golden coins and flowers and rewards. Sometimes you're going to look like a complete idiot. And I'm afraid Mr. John William Schultz of the White Piece is that is you today, sir. And this game, a very nice play, though, from Black, and uh, a very long name for me to pronounce, so I'm going to dodge that one. E4, E5, F4. The only way to disprove a gambit is by accepting it. Pawn takes F4. Bishop C4, Queen to H4, check. And this is a line of the King's Gambit. We're not concentrating on the opening here. Let's get to the middle game position. King to F1, and now B5, a counter gambit. The idea is to push the bishop to a more negative square, because we know how strong the bishop can be aiming at the Achilles heel here, and to give us some opportunities to develop quickly. Uh, there was a funny story about this move. After, in 1993, in the World Championship match between Nigel Schwartz and Gary Kasparov, which Gary Kasparov convincingly won, they played an exhibition match around there, um, still for serious money, and they had to start from certain positions. And Gary Kasparov had to start from this position with Black. He had to start, this was part of the contract, to start playing for this position, which he was so upset about. He was complaining, he was moaning, he was saying, why you give me such rubbish? Why I have to play? Why I have to play with B5? Who do you think I am? And he lost the game horribly. But we all know that Gary's a real character. Okay, so let's have a look. Well, Bishop takes B5, and now we have to get our pieces into the game. Knight to F6, the knight flies in. White develops, Black comes in. Threatening checkmate. Always look for threats when you're trying to attack. Knight to h3. And now the other knight comes in. Knight to c6. White goes for the c7 pawn. But again, when you're trying to attack, I always say look at the most aggressive moves first. So rather than defending c7, diving in. Knight to d4. And now black has three kind of menacing pieces here. Knight takes c7 check. White's been a very greedy so-and-so. King to d8. Knight takes a8. But here, black is a lot of pieces down. A lot of people might consider knight takes bishop here, but in real romantic fashion, we want to go for checkmate. So how do we open up the white king war? And pause now if you need to find a move that is a good, aggressive opening of the position move. F3, using the F pawn, using a pawn to try to get rid of the G pawn. And you can see a little bit of similarity with Bowden's mate, the crisscross here, because if that pawn moves, the queen comes in crisscrossing. D3, trying to... Threaten, bishop check, a nasty cheeky little move. Black stops that, f6, controlling that square, stopping the bishop coming in. Now, white plays bishop c4 here, and this is a very slow move and a very greedy move. And now black plays a fantastic move. At the moment, there is no obvious way to force a big attack here, because the knight on h3 is such a good defensive piece. We need to bring in reinforcements. And this is a good little clue. When attacking, if you can't do an immediate forcing way through the position, look at your reinforcements, bring them in. This bishop on c8 needs to come in, pawn to d5. Romantic, beautiful stuff. The bishop, now dreams are coming in. Bishop takes d5, and now one more piece comes into the attack, bishop d6. Look at the black pieces. They're doing such a fantastic job. White should have played e5 here, because had he had played this move, his bishop could have helped with the defense of his king. Instead, he played queen to e1, thinking he'd get the queens off the board and win the game easily. But he was shocked after pawn takes g2, and now run, forest, run. King takes g2. How can we make that white king run? And in this position, black has a beautiful way to do the run, forest, run, mate, forcing the white king into the open. Pause the video now and work out how you can force check mate. Well, of course, we need to bring the king more further into the danger zone. Queen takes h3 check, giving up our queen to bring that king forwards. King takes h3. And now how do we bring the king even further into our, our zone of the board? Well, we've got a discovered move here. We don't want the king to go back to g2. Knight to e3 check. There's only one square for the king. King to h4. 
How can we force the king even further into our danger zone? Look for checks. Knight to f3 check. The king now comes forwards. And in this position, a run, forest run. It's checkmate in one move. Bishop g4, checkmate. And I'm really stopping my little series of checkmates for that one. The run, forest run idea. Not particularly a pattern. It involves a lot of ideas, this. But I wanted to include those fun games. And uh, I really hope you enjoyed this series on what I consider to be the most important checkmates out there. There's a number of checkmate patterns, but these 15 we've looked at, I consider they are the most common. They are the ones that will really help you improve if you really study them, try to work out the patterns involved them, and hopefully they'll take you to that next level. And, you know, it's been a pleasure. And hopefully I'll be back uh, with some more interesting stuff another time. So goodbye for now. <laughs>